we were talking about the uh, the Roadhouse remake, and I was saying to him how I was saying to Battle Athlete how like it's very tongue in cheek, and it's like really fun. I did. I don't have you ever seen the first Roadhouse movie? Okay. Uh, so like it, it, I feel like it, it kind of perfectly encapsulates it, but it like it doesn't do the first movie. It doesn't. It it has aspects of the first movie, but it like. It makes a another movie that you like you would want to watch. It's not like it's not a sequel. It's not an outright sequel. It's basically a remake. Same character, technically. That's, okay. Yeah, whatever, I guess. It has like the same ideas, but it like takes it and is like, well, what if we did this? And at, it, it, to me, I felt like it really all worked. Like instead yeah, of having the first it. This one was just ridiculous. So yeah. As long as it's just ridiculous again, sure. Why not, right? It it's yeah. super ridiculous. It's super ridiculous, oh, cool. but also really really fun. Um, as well as like X Men '97, which is I still have to watch that. It's really good, man. I uh, you know uh, I mean, probably I love the original, so like I should love this. Yeah. It like okay, so take the original, but then make the action scenes better. And yeah, it's pretty well animated. Would, take incredibly much, but all right, yeah, you're cool, nice. Well, like, like Spend take all their budget on the opening. It's fine. <laughs> take take the opening and then stretch that out to the rest of the sh the. Yeah, yeah, and make it the whole show. All right, yeah. cool, we're in. That's like every '80s '90s cartoon where the so all the budget true. went into the opening and they outsourced it the to like Japan so or some clean. shit. It's just like, oh my god, I'm ready for this. Oh, ah, oh no. Yeah. Two different teams, like the, man. The it's the like Thundercats, Thundercats opening. Yeah, yeah, we both exactly. said it at the same time. Um, yeah, dude, Thundercats is like notorious. the perfect example. Yeah, it's one. Of, it's like the greatest animation opening of all it's time. It's so cool. The show starts and it's, it's like, so where good. are my shoes, Snarf? Ooh. You're like, what the fuck is going on? They have such petty a little snarf. stupid. I don't know, Snarf. Yeah, I can't find your sneakers, Snarf, Snarf. <laughs> You're like, God, what? Worst character. <laughs> Yeah, dude, what happened? Like, the opening started out with all this cool shit, and, like, and then it just cuts to some petty bullshit. We're gonna have a barbecue! You know, like, what the <laughs> fuck? And then in the remake, they're like, Snarf can't talk. It's just a pet. He can't do anything. <laughs> Worthless. <laughs> I'm like, yes, best change. 10 out of 10. Keep this. You're talking about the, the early 2000s, He-Man? Huh? No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Thundercats. Oh, or is that the 2013 uh, one? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah. 20, He's talking about the one from Cartoon Network. Whatever. It was yeah. So good. It was so good. So many. I good have to changes. admit, I didn't give it a chance when it was on the air because I was like, whatever. Oh. There's no way. But then later on, I found out after it was canceled, I checked that out and I was like, oh shit, this was actually good. It I was, fucked it was up. Super good. It had like one of the best episodes of like a uh, animated show I've watched. And I was just like, hell yeah, this is amazing. And then toy sales are bad. I feel I feel partially responsible for not watching it myself before. It, until was, after it all it was came down to toy sales. It all came down to toy sales. Oh, that's true. Yeah, if whether or not you watch the show is irrelevant. It's about merch. Pretty much. Well, yeah, I mean, so not only that, but like you think about that show and how like who the hell was it? Who was who were they advertising to? And it was it, for me. It was for you, right? <laughs> it was, it's it for it's for, for it's for you. But like to, like what? Most toy sales come from kids, right? yeah so i mean it's a little bit of a weird i feel like they also put it in like a weird time slot too it was oh, a, a lot a of weird choices time slot it was it was at like seven at night or something like that so it was like that's it was like a pretty time. solid time slot yeah, yeah it just prime time. it wasn't really aimed at kids for the most part like it was definitely more for like fans of the show yeah and I think that really, really harmed it in the long run, which is unfortunate, but what you gonna I, do? I mean, the other thing is that you're basically battling nostalgia because the truth is, yeah. is that Thundercats lives on in a powerful nostalgia, nostalgia based around the opening, like completely. People watch the yeah. opening and then they stop watching, right? So it's like yeah. they have this false nostalgia about how good Thundercats was. Mm -hmm. So then they're watching this new show and like boomers that actually watch it. Oh no, old Thundercats was way more. Oh no, this isn't right. And da da da. It's like one of those tricky nostalgias where 
fans of it don't even really consume the thing they're a fan of, like Darkstalkers yeah. fans. Like they don't really, they don't really they, play they, the game. Darkstalkers they fans actually play Darkstalkers. They'll Dark, just talk right. about it. They just like the characters. <laughs> Darkstalkers fans really like Morgan, and that's about it. That's about yeah, it. They like the characters, but they don't play their game. You know what I mean? Like the characters transcend their game, but nobody actually plays it. Morgan, Felicia. Uh, Dimitri, John Talbain. <laughs> Um, but but actually, you know, I feel really bad for people who like who grew up in like the 60s and 70s because look, I'm gonna say it. A lot of those cartoons were trash. They're just so bad. They're just yeah. like As someone who watched the recycled ones because in the reruns it's just syndicated. Uh, I have to agree, but I also have a super soft spot for Scooby Doo and uh, He Man and Thundercats. So, well, I mean, you're 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 picking out oh, like. Well the best examples from that time period and, and when Free like 95 percent dude i went and back and look dude and... i love sharks that show's not good that show dude, is it's so not good it's not so good bad. it's jawsome oh, oh it's yeah it's, it's, it's <laughs> so not jawsome they have like a car that just grows rockets and then shoots into the sky it's and it's just it's no, absolute nonsense i read some dark water i don't know i i could just go on for ages about cartoons i i, I, I do cartoons, like Pirates cartoons. of dark water yeah the monkey bird and yeah that, that show got robbed good. it really did that was a good show that was a good one we're on oh. to our next adventure we got to find the other treasures bye nah. <laughs> bye <laughs> sounds like Yuna yasha or something it's like, oh we're god gonna find all the jewel shards and then next yeah, season we gotta find all the jewel shards Inuyasha. well pirates of dark water had like a pretty like um a fluid plot like it had a very like laser focus on what they had to do and how they were going to do it but that's not always enough yeah i mean it had a great animation studio especially for yeah, the time that too its animation was way up there i think it was probably canceled because it was expensive to make I like think you're right. Animation, that kind of animation, that like, like it holds up these days. And so it's like, okay, that's really nice. Like it's clean, it's fluid. It's not just the opening, which is also another great opening, by the way. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I think for me, like the first thing that pops up when you say like the intro is better than the show is always Mega Man. The, the fighting robot. Yeah. Mega Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I mean, that, the, yeah, no, that, that song power. goes pretty hard. Yeah, it, the song goes pretty hard. But man, that oh God, there was so much. That show was a thing, wasn't it? <laughs> there was so much like corporate influence that just jacked that show up, man. It was supposed to be Speaking of jacked. Everyone was just buff as shit in that show. <laughs> yeah, that's what they wanted because like West, like the Western team came in and originally it was supposed to be like this you know, Japanese style cartoony looking Mega Man and they had that as the pilot. And they're like, Oh, this looks, you know, really good but then, you know, these coked up executives comes come in there with their Western sensibilities. They're like, No, we want him to be you know, he's he's supposed to be a man. Make him look like a man for Western audience and make him bad. <laughs> like, make a man, you know. not a mega boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They they came in with that that bullshit and then they just completely screwed up the show. Next thing you know, we got what we got now, where he's like, hey, I'm Mega Man, yeah. and it's like, roll oh is God. now 31, you know? Yeah. It's like, what is going on? Yeah, I Mega remember. Mega Man's in his midlife crisis, and he's fighting evil. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Did you ever have that experience where you, because I know we probably all you know, grew up in the 90s, where in, you know, in yeah. early 2000s, and it's like, you ever have that experience where you're like looking through a game magazine and then you're like, you kind of start to compare the animation in that to like a TV show and you're like, why can't everything look this good? And then it's just sort of like when you look at like, you know, Marvel versus Capcom role versus like the cartoon show. And it's just like, well, what what happens? What is this? Which one is supposed to be the, the one? Which one is looks right? Yeah, I didn't. I couldn't tell you. You know, you know but at least we got redemption with Battle Network, which was a legitimate, like, good show and had, like, some actual good freaking designs for Mega Man and the I'm crew. A big fan so of Battle Network, yeah. It's fine. Mega Man.exe was pretty sick, not gonna lie. 
But uh, yeah, I think a big uh, big thing of what you're talking about is like um, like you were just talking about how um, like which one do you follow? Like which one's canon? Yeah, and it's kind of like the same like historically like who wins the war writes the history books. So it's like which one ever makes the most money will be the one that <laughs> yeah. basically will be become canon. Kind of like Street Fighter Two, the animated movie. Uh, basically was so insanely popular but that basically that became the character's lore and structure because that stuff wasn't cemented uh, from the games yet. There was like an American comic book uh, from Malibu Comics mm -hmm. that only had like three volumes where like Ryu and Chun-Li were dating and Sagat scalped Ken and sent it to Ryu and yeah dude it was insane. It was like, <laughs> yeah it was like 90s comic book style dark gritty and it wasn't well drawn. We have the metal now. <laughs> right. And then there's also the, the cartoon series on USA that was badly animated where it's like, oh, guys yeah. and like an elite team force of G.I. Joe bullcrap, you know, trying that, to sell toys. That one, that one along with the freaking uh, Mario that was also on USA. Right. Yeah. So it's like, which one's the most popular and makes the most money? That will pretty much write the history books on what the lore is. So the movie was so insanely Tracks. well done and well received that that we lucked out became then. the lore. Um, but I mean, it just kind of like shows like for whatever reason in the 90s, America was just deathly afraid to show like what the the original product looked like for whatever reason. And they just thought, well, well this is too different. Hey, kids aren't going to like it. It's too, it's too Asian. It's too Japanese. We got to change it. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Which is, you know, you just look at the Mega Man art between like the american box cover and the japanese box cover and you're like yeah. who the hell is this guy with like his gun <laughs> time to bring home the bacon is he, a little fat? he looks a little he looks a little chubby too i, I guarantee understand what's going on <laughs> i guarantee you somebody in like an executive room for mega man was like let's call him gun man you know <laughs> guns are manly um but I mean, like that's that's like the entire joke of w why Mega Man was in uh, uh, Street Fighter Cross Second on on the PS oh, PS3. Man. Remember oh, yeah. they brought yeah. box art Mega Man to like box uh, art Mega Man. <laughs> that was such a that was such a badly timed release. <laughs> that was that was such like a deep cut, and people that understood it were like thought it was hilarious, and others were like, what is this stupid ass character? Well, well I, I, people were pissed because they had already like. They hadn't had a Mega Man game in a long time. They would canceled yeah. Mega Man Legends 3, and then there was another Mega yeah. Man game that had got canceled. I so, like, all these Mega Man games were getting canceled, and then what do Mega Man fans get? Like, an insulting, overweight, middle-aged box the, art the Mega best. Man. The best. With a handgun. Yeah. yeah, in a fighting game that was poorly received because of its, like, poor launch and other, like, issues that they had with, like, on-disc DLC. It was so just, it's just Japan weird. pointing and laughing at us the whole time. Mm. I feel like they've been doing that for like 20 years. I, I think I remember hearing a story of like America talking to freaking or like Capcom USA calling Capcom Japan like, hey, guys, uh, you can't put this stuff on the disc. You got to You got to take it off. And they're like, who's going to look at the disc? And it's just like they're just like, send it. And so, no, no uh, yeah, uh, that really kind of ruined that uh, that, you know, angle for everyone. Um, <laughs> what it was is that it was a deal gone bad uh they those characters were supposed to be exclusive for like vita to push the sales for the vita so they had basically agreed to that so oh. the characters were done so they had them available for vita like off the bat and but they had to like withhold them they, so, you know so it was like a business deal that oh. when when it got okay. discovered they were like oh you know and then everybody was pissed off so and that, the vita that, didn't sell so right Unfortunately, yeah. I feel like the Vita deserved better looking. Vita back, got right? robbed, but I Vita so. also had a bunch of horrible design decisions that ultimately led to its downfall, which we could probably do a whole freaking podcast on as well. Um, oh, my Lord, the Vita. Uh, have you ever I'm, I'm sure you've you've watched like Tim Rogers, uh, right? Battle athlete. You ever watched Tim mm -hmm. Rogers? Yeah. Like the reviewer. He has like he, on YouTube. He has like two hour long reviews or three hour long reviews of a video game. Uh, so I think like one of his, the games, and this kind of like reminds me of this, uh, is uh, like, it's a, it's like Boku no, uh, like, I don't know, like summertime, something like that, where like essentially it's a slice of life 
game for the PS1 where like you go around you like it's it's your it's your whole experience as a boy or during the summer like catching bugs and stuff like that. And like one of the things that Tim Rogers did was he had somebody make a box art for it, but he made an American version. So like the kid is like all gruff and like <laughs> like kind of crude, like the the rad crude kid. Um, oh no. Oh um, yeah, I, I, just, I just I just looked him up. I, I okay, I, I I watched his cyberpunk video. Yeah, yeah did, like, action, action button, right? Action button gamer or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, action buttons is the name. Yeah, I've watched this guy. I just didn't know his yep. name was Tim Rogers. Yeah, that video you're talking about, Matt, is like eight hours long or some nonsense. I I, I had to watch it like over a. It took me a week to finish the whole thing. Yeah. Because I had His to like Cyberpunk stop it. His review is like 16 hours, I think. He broke it up into a bunch of two hour sections and you can like <laughs> pick and choose your adventure essentially. <laughs> Yeah, his and Cyberpunk is an hour and his Boku no Natsu Yasumi is six hours. Well, there's crazy. more though to the Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah, the Cyberpunk's not even an hour. It's it's literally you finish that one, then you click on another one and you keep going. Yeah, right. you're right. Yeah, there's he has that. like a whole playlist of them. It's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. I did watch all of those. I remember now it was more than it's one. It's so long. <laughs> I feel it's bad crazy. for that guy because like he I don't know why he's so attached to making those like that like videos that long. But he'll he hasn't he, he hasn't been uploading like in, in like a year. He well, hasn't uploaded a yeah, video. I mean that's that's what he does. He like he disappears for like a year and then he'll come back with like a five hour review and be like, there we go. Have that. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that. I'm gonna be honest because if you do the whole I'm trying to make it a full time career thing, it just completely drains your creative juices, and you're just like, it makes you hate it. And it looks like he just comes back and makes videos about whatever he feels like making, and yeah. makes them as long as he wants, which does not appeal to the algorithm. So he's clearly wow. making content for himself and not for other people, which yeah. so is so rare. He's just purely like a passionate YouTuber. That's, Here's that's right. all it comes down to. And, and I believe a lot of money in it. I, I believe that. None. But here's the thing. He will talk about his next review and like has made posts as he's making it over the course of like six to seven or eight months. So it makes me think that he's just putting way too much time into a video. It's not even that, it's not that he will just be like, I'm randomly showing up. It's just that I don't think he can keep up with his own workload that he's given himself is my I mean, kind of interpretation of that. He ridiculous amount of work into every single video. Like there's, yeah. there's so much editing that goes into his videos. It kind of makes sense. And I know he doesn't have an editor, so like. Yeah, and whatever. there's not a lot of money in it because usually you can kind of make or you can kind of make a rounded uh, guess about how much income a video is made outside of sponsorship. So if it makes like a million, if it gets like a million views, that's like a thousand dollars or something. So there's not like a ton of money in it unless there's like any sponsorships he has. And I'm willing to bet he's not constantly working on it. I bet you he's like he's got a good like work and life balance. Yeah. Where he comes yeah. back and ma and just works on it whenever he feels like he has time. Uh, yeah, and just like has a little work. spare time. He's like, oh yeah, I should work on that video. Right, right. I, that's what I think. I mean, we're all making assumptions about. Yeah. It, absolutely. I mean, it, that's, that's what it I think. just kind of makes sense, right? Like from a workflow perspective to like his passion, like just kind of makes sense. It yeah, seem like any outrageous claims or anything like that. Literally nothing against the guy. He's awesome. I love his videos. Yeah, I, I also like that he's not super loud and funny and trying to like be a yeah. funny ha ha guy or whatever. He's funny just ha -ha. like coming out here more, almost more of a filmmaker, a document like he's making a documentary. Yeah. It's like his personality is the entire sort of like what brings you to it, and. And that in in the way he's kind of done that is like I've never seen I've never seen any another creator like him before. I, and I, I mean, I, I doubt, you know, I mean, I don't know if I ever will again, but I mean, he just is a very quirky, like weird speech pattern type dude, but pretty damn funny. I think he, uh, the other thing, too, is he also owns his own game company, which he works on games as well. So I think that's oh, I kind of. That. Yeah, I didn't know that at all. Um, but yeah, 
so like speaking of of things that they completely americanized well not completely but oh, street yeah. fighter 2 the animated movie i think we had, we had watched it um we had watched it uh, i think a few times like i know quint did he watched it like 12 times at this point i've i've watched it a bunch now yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the review this week okay i gotta watch it i gotta get a refresh in no no podcast all right we're doing I... it next week <laughs> 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 hey man, but we we made it. We we did it at the end of the day. Yeah, let me watch all the different versions ever made. It's fine. I I'm going to say right now that I, I don't know what your guys was experience like when you first saw this. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that this is the reason why I was like I got into anime in general. Was one of, what this movie was one of the big reasons. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. I mean, you can't understate about like the influence that this anime had for better or for worse on anime in the 90s. Like um, one of the first things, I think we talked about this a little bit last time I was on the podcast, but uh, they used a lot of uh, Western music like um, uh, like Alice in Chains and stuff like that. And it really worked for the film somehow. Yeah. Like it, it, it really worked. And so a lot of animes a lot of other companies are like, oh, okay, well, let's take a fighting anime or a fighting game anime, and we're going to do that same thing. And they tried to do the same thing for Tekken. It uh, didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. They tried to, they, they took the Tekken anime movie and tried to put, like, 90s rap and 90s rock music that was just so weird. Oh, they did the same thing there? for Samurai Showdown. They did. They even did it for Dragon Ball Z movies. Some yeah. Yep. I, yep. So, and, I could never forget and the crazy part is, is like, I, I think I really liked those as a kid, but now when I rewatch them, I'm like, why would I want to sit down and like listen to a metal album while I, while I watch <laughs> Dragon Ball Z? I don't want to listen to this. I, I like, this is the last thing I want to listen to. It's just so alienating from Goku's character because like you're watching like Lord Slug or something like that. And then Disturbed comes in and it's like, Ooh, <laughs> ah, ah, and you're like, what? This is so weird. Like even at the time when I was a kid. I was sitting there. I'm like, this is cool, but this is weird. Like, it didn't it didn't make sense to me even as a kid when I was watching it. I was like, this music feels so out of place. Like, it's almost like they wanted to make an make an AMV, but they couldn't edit the movie around the music. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I have no idea how that that came about, but um, I, I think this definitely somehow Street Fighter Two is like the only movie that I can think of where, like, I would legitimately listen to this soundtrack. If you know, if I was just hanging out or something like that, it's a really good animated movie center. I I'm shocked that they they pulled it off as well as they did. I can't think of anything else that has actually done that. Um, yeah, there was there was a couple of issues with it too. Like they had some typos. Uh, they had actually chopped up the movie for years. It wasn't until the Blu-ray release of Street Fighter Two that they actually get the the originals and uh fill in the audio gaps that had been in the english version um because the original uh us and uk versions i think were pg-13 so they what they did is they chopped they chopped up a couple of minutes of footage from the the original Jap japanese on un, uh uncensored release mm -hmm. so there's like lingering shots of re walking down off an alleyway or like lingering shots of Ken driving his Porsche and stuff. And they, and they cut out all these things for pacing. So, um, like when they, that, and that was basically the Western version, uh, with it, with all of its audio. So that's like the original English version. So it wasn't until Blu-ray that they took like the Japanese version and tried to take the original audio masters and fill in the gaps and try to make the audio. So it wasn't until the Blu-ray we actually got like all the gore, all the cursing, um, you know, the Chun Li nudity scenes, like all yeah. that stuff was actually in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, There's a lot more to that story, though. Also, like the English had an insane amount of takes. Like they did like a take for each kind of like um, for each rating. rating. Yep. Yeah. And whoa. So they have we so we had a bunch of stuff like hey you know f bison i'm gonna feed you your goddamn heart etc etc yeah, all the way to like right. hey bison you suck yeah you know? hey, bison, like, get out of here you nerd yeah creep 
That's insane. Why I oughta. Yeah, so like, <laughs> it's kind of wild. Because I think the first like uncensored in English was actually released in the UK. Yeah, well. Because they ended up taking the more explicit English stuff that they recorded and they're like, hell yeah, we're putting that in there. Uh, but Chun Li's titties, that that can't go in there. All yeah, the blood they, though, all that stuff, that's fine. You, well, you can get some Chun the, ass, and that's all. Yeah, in the UK version, they gave they actually showed her boobs, but took away the butt scene. <laughs> so people thought that was. Oh, did I get it backwards? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's there's so many different versions though. It's like there's the PG-13 sure. America, and there's the UK version where they added all the extra cussing because they had uh, different rating systems up there. And then we PG got the PG US version. Yeah, there's the the PG-13 was the first one, and then they did the fully unreleased version on DVD that was still cut. But yeah, it wasn't until Blu-ray where they got the masters and they completely just gave us like the full version, like no cut footage at all. Uh, it, it's like, oh my God. It's and like, then they took the full dialogue. Yeah. You know, like, I'm going to rip out your fucking heart, Bison. Oh, yeah, it's okay. kind of awkward. You're like, geez, guy, calm down. <laughs> I mean, I get it, Guile. You got some trauma from this guy, but let's, let's, let's dial it back a little bit. Yeah, I guess you killed your best friend, but language. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know you're fighting for two right now, but come on. Come on, bud. Come on. I, I think, like, for me, and I, I don't know if you guys want to, like, share the first time you, you saw this movie, but, like, there's something about that kind of time for me for anime that is very nostalgic because when i was a kid it's like i saw first time i saw this movie was on hbo actually like at my because i used to go to my dad's house on the weekends right and so you know you'd stay my dad would let us stay up late so i was like oh we get to stay up late oh cool and then all of a sudden it's like i get to watch this anime where there's like violence and then there's you know all of these things like really cool animated fight scenes and stuff like that that really stuck with me and so it's it's sort of like, you know, it felt like something special. And, and you know, obviously, I I think I, I kind of um, thought all anime was like that, you know, too. I was like, oh, all anime is this cool. All fight scenes are, th you know, this is so cool, man. Why, why don't we have this here in the States? Uh, and then, of course, you know, as you go on, you're like, hmm my god but uh yeah it's more oh, like no. you enjoy anything you can get your hands on you know yeah you're, you're seeing the pinnacle of animation like at that time period like uh i was channel surfing and came across sci-fi channel and they used to have an anime block they so did, i was just channel yes. surfing and i i caught like the last part of fatal fury the movie and I was like, whoa, what the hell kind of cartoon is this? I'm, I don't even know who Terry Bogart is, but he's doing like this huge hyper knuckle and then he's fighting a yeah. god and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell? Is this is so sick. This is the coolest cartoon I've ever seen. And, you know, it's you're seeing all that stuff and then you're like, oh, let me branch out. Ooh, Ninja Scroll. You're like, oh, this isn't for kids. Ninja Scroll's not for kids. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what do you mean she chopped his head off and banged the body? I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I just thought it was going to be cool ninjas. Yeah, those cool ninja stuff. <laughs> but the first it... time I saw it was um, my buddy JJ, who was like, I swear to God, the original neckbeard. Um, he had a bunch of like imported like VHSs and stuff from Japan. And so I watched Street Fighter 2 from Japan on VHS. Wow. Um, that was when I first saw it. Because he had like a bunch. Yep, yep. All that nonsense. You know, like the smooth melodies while they're fighting Bison. It's like, oh, yeah, it that... doesn't really fit the fight, but whatever, I guess. You know, it's kind of triumphant, I suppose. But yeah, like he had just like so much anime. I would like always go over to his place and he would always have like all the latest stuff from Japan. So it was it was it was an experience like uh even at the time i was like this is like really well done yeah like it's it was just like a really like nicely animated movie and i still think that yeah which is weird it's still really gorgeous and i i think mm -hmm. i i can't remember i think it if i'm, I'm not mistaken i think like was it studio madhouse that animated this or something mm -hmm. along those lines and i think they the, yeah, yeah and they 
they they were like the team that did a lot of like Dragon Ball Z fights as well. I believe I could be wrong about that. I, I believe they animated like a lot of stuff in the Boo Saga, like a lot of the Boo Saga fights. Um, mm, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, and and um, so you know that just the that animation team is amazing, but it it seemed like this was almost like a demo of like saying this is what we can do. This, you know, this is how talented we are as a team. Um, and yeah. Oh, sorry. I mean, go, no. go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, go ahead. I was, I was just gonna little, little tidbit of information though. There's also a typo in the credits, uh, where instead of Madhouse, it says Mudhouse. <laughs> in the original Street Fighter Two credits, they they totally jacked the up there, giving them credit. So yeah, I think I think that's true. I think they were busting their ass to get their name out there, but then they got their name they, wrong. They, they called them Studio Mudhouse. Oh god, yeah, Mudhouse, dude, that sucks. I mean, Madhouse has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. so, like this, this wasn't like one of their first endeavors. Like it wasn't. It was definitely like one of their better showings at the time, for sure. But. Yeah, they've been around for ever. Um, Holy. for sure. And I was just thinking, like, uh, like uh, first and foremost, I think we can all say it. Like, I feel like you know the movie is overall it, the animation is like the first and foremost the best thing about it. The story mm -hmm. is is just okay for me. I think it's I, I think it's fun. You know, it's serviceable. It's serviceable. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to see like your, you know, the World Warriors fight or whatever, you get a little bit of everybody. Um, yeah. And, you know, even Akuma, who's out there just selling fruit, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was so early into his life that they, they, they didn't even know what his personality was at the time. You know, Orange he, was just, he was just a secret character, like hidden boss that was be, like being rumored for the most part around that time. So. Like, you know, they, they they still thought he could be, like, just a hermit-style kind of dude that just kind of hangs back, sells oranges, and is just, like, you know, Vibin. just salt of the earth kind of dude. Just, like, hanging around, training. How that but, design? Yeah, before he turned into, like, a demon, and now he's, like, <laughs> you know, he's definitely evil as hell, not selling oranges. You know what I mean? Like, No, he still yeah. sells oranges on the side. It's fine. <laughs> evil man's got to eat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I mean, like I, the movie definitely has problems and I feel like obviously pacing being the biggest one, even with, you know, the the amount that the American version had cut out, I still feel like the pacing isn't that great. Um, it kind of felt like they were sort of using panning shots a lot of times to like fill up time because mm. maybe they, maybe they didn't have enough story or something like that. Um, like obviously you know like the the walking scenes like i honestly was shocked to find out that they cut more walking or like you know ryu walking down a path or like bison and his crew walking down a corridor and like i, I, I was like you're telling me those are shorter oh my god yeah what? yeah well it's, it's like um when ryu walks away mm -hmm. and then it just it just holds on like the alleyway as Ryu just goes whoop, 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 yeah he's just and walking then vanishes. Away from, yeah from giving that girl <laughs> money for his spilled milk it's just like okay <laughs> and then it just holds on the empty alleyway for a little bit it's like yeah no that's a nice alleyway but we can move on right yeah even, um, even the English holds on the alleyway for some reason. It doesn't show like Ryu doing like the do 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 down, but it holds on the alleyway for a little bit. Yeah, well, it just cuts to kind of like be like, hey, look, he he went this way probably. Yeah, they cut like three minutes of walking and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They really wanted this movie to be like, you know what? We don't have story, but we're gonna give you some vibes. That's what we're gonna yeah. do. <laughs> They're like, um, yeah, it's setting the tone. <laughs> You yeah, know what's funny is that it's not until after you watch it and you absolutely just love the movie where you just cherish those extra three minutes of walking even more. Because <laughs> so I'll be watching it and be like, man, this movie's so brilliant the way it holds, and you can like soak in the atmosphere and the music yeah. or whatever. I didn't, but it's like, I didn't oh. mind the walking, first of yeah, when yeah. I watched the Japanese. Now I, I was like, it's, it's fine. It's, yeah. It suits to like build atmosphere and stuff like that. It's cool. 
for that. Yeah, with the music setting the, the tone. The English didn't want that. So they wanted fun. Saturday morning cartoon, yeah. kids yeah. eating sugary cereal, ADHD, you know, don't yeah. want them getting distracted. And that, that probably worked. I mean, when I was watching it, I was a kid and it worked. So, yeah. but now as an adult, I like watching the extended cut. As a kid with ADHD, I watched it. As an adult with ADHD, I watch it. You know, it's, it works. <laughs> the ADD didn't go anywhere. <laughs> no, it's, it's staying. It's here to stay. Unmedicated um, ADD. 10 yeah. out of 10. And it's not, it's not that for me, it's not that the walking scenes are bad or anything like that. I just see it as like, I don't mind it, but I could definitely see it as a criticism of the movie. Oh, for sure. Oh, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Um, and I do think that even though Ryu really doesn't have that much dialogue, they do an amazing job at portraying who he, at, who he is as a person. I mean, he's... Yeah, with few words. And I mean, it is simple. Like they sort of like, uh, like obviously Ken, Ken always has dialogue, right? But whenever it goes to Ryu, oh, yeah. it's like, it's like Ryu is thinking about what his teacher taught him as a, as a kid and, and you know, who he is as a person. And, you know, sort of like you learn more about him through his past more so than, you know, what's currently going on. Because as soon as, you know, the fight with Bison comes up, you know what's going to happen. Like, Ryu's going to be like, okay, this guy's an asshole. Uh, he's a bad guy. I'm going to go fight him. That's that's all there is. Like, he's he is definitely, like, the pure of heart hero type character. Yeah, well, also because he did his friend wrong. I mean, he showed up with Ken all brainwashed and jacked up. That's his best friend. So I think that's what his triggered boy. him. Yeah, that, I think that's what triggered him to start trying to kick the crap out of him. But then Ken, you know, started fighting him instead yeah. before they teamed up. So, yeah, I was not expecting like I, I I'm not going to lie. I was expecting when I first saw the movie, I was always expecting like Ryu to just one V one Bison. But then when they teamed up, I was like, what? They're they're going to like the heroes are going to like double team the bad guy. The uh, bad guy's got psychokinesis powers, cheating butthole. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't like psycho power technically something that like Bison harnessed and like taught himself in general? Ro well, Rose uh, taught him when he was he was yeah. like near death or something like that, and she saved him in a village, and then taught him psycho power, and then he start and they basically it either corrupted him or he always had the intention of using that psycho power that Rose. I think he always had the intention. He so just wanted power. I think so too. The problem with with my knowledge of like Bison and Rose is that I know the Udon comics lore of that, which is I think they were two, of the, they were the same person, and then they split uh, their like their their personality. And like the the good side the good side of Bison is Rose, obviously, and then you know Bison's all pure evil. But I don't I I don't know where I got that, and <laughs> I have not like proofed that at all yeah, um i was gonna say i i never sounds heard like that a wild before. ass theory i don't know <laughs> i'm i'm I, I swear to god i sw i'm pretty sure that that's either it might it might even be in like street fighter like the animated series with uh you know the the usa one but um i could be wrong i don't know where i, th I thought of that but look that up but i either way um uh so i i mean like it definitely does have like great vibes and the u.s version you know kind of caps it captured that and i think a big reason for that being uh was like les claypool did the sound mixing for the the movie right and mm -hmm. if you i'm not sure if you guys are familiar with primus but he, he's like an amazing musician um and so i think like he sort of just had a really great ability to kind of feel like what would carry a scene more so than maybe like you know the guy that did Tekken yeah he had he had like a strong vision for like how he wanted each scene to sound and he was able to very easily apparently bring that to like fruition yeah for sure um and even to the point where I think you know I, I about all, I think we both watched that same video where it said that you know later on he he's the reason why that he re, he remixed all of the versions which is how we have mm -hmm. that sort of like perfect version of yeah. street fighter that 2 perfect version which is we just fan made the latest time it's uh, fan made yeah it's fan, fan i think yeah it's fan made yeah. yeah so so like the fans were like they got less they went and they found less claypool and they're like hey can you remix this because he had all the masters of it 
So then he just like we mixed in all the audio. Versions. We have five versions of Street Fighter, the movie. <laughs> just like the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We got championship uh, edition of the movie. We got super <laughs> turbo movie. Um, so like, what what were um some kind of like highlights that you guys wanted to to like touch upon in, in the movie here? I kind of wanted to uh, jump back to talking about Ryu and how in the movie they do a, a strong like juxtaposition between their two personalities, like with. Ken being the hotshot, talking a lot, and then Ryu being more like, you know, somber, secluded, controlled, right? Yeah. I felt like that's one of like the strongest parts of the movie is how they characterize these people. Yeah. Like they made Honda into more of a character. They made Dalsim into more of a character. Like it really just breathed life <laughs> into everything. God damn it, cat. Yeah, like sort of short characterization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It worked really, really well. Yeah, I think. And I think uh, that's one one thing that helps carry the movie is the strong characterizations. Yeah, it's amazing how much character comes through with such little screen time and yeah. dialogue. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like it's amazing how iconic and like uh, a staple it is for so many characters cammy scene where she assassinates that uh that senator politician. yeah, yeah the senator yeah yeah i mean dude that's like that's cammy icon that's iconic cammy or like yo know, let, let's get let's talk about the big one the vega versus chun li fight i mean that's yeah right the absolutely. best fight in the movie man man not even just the movie i think some people would say that's one of the greatest anime fight scenes of all time that's, that's freaking fair yeah it's so good it's so good. Very, very good. Um, like, you just like it because she's in her underwear. I mean, yeah, that's a bonus point, all right? But the fight's also <laughs> badass. <laughs> moody lighting and uh, just how yeah. raw it is with all the blood and the desperation. Real... Yeah. Like, the first persons that you get for the sides, like like vision blurring, like, oh man, I, I'm freaking donezo if I don't do it here, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's great because she's kind of put on her back foot. And not even, uh, and it's it's more that she's caught by surprise, but she's still like, th like they they emphasize how strong Chun Li is. She picks up she picks up a yeah. fucking couch. She picks up. <laughs> she's done. And he, oh, Vega's like, what the shit? Yeah, even he's like, damn, you pick that up. I'm, like, I'm not picking that up. Vega's like, I hire movers. I don't know about you. Like, <laughs> not only that, but she literally kicks a man through a wall. Through a wall. Right? Yeah, not even not even drywall. Man, that was kicks. brick. That was Oof. brick wall. That was insane. It was so sick like, though. Like that that had yeah. so much influence on like yeah. so much anime. Like um, this is a little off subject, but my friend David uh, D Slugs, he's a, a professional artist and animator. He did a um, he did a uh, animation for to promote that new Scream movie. Uh, that he was hired to make and and basically the you know Ghostface is chasing this this woman around in this animation he did and you can see like almost the entire thing is influenced by that Chun-Li Vega fight like it's got oh, the moody oh. lighting and uh yeah and like Ghostface cuts through a pillow the same way like in the in the fight scene in the Street Fighter 2 animated movie it's like massive I'll have to send it to you if you haven't yeah. seen it yeah I, I yeah I didn't even know about that that sounds awesome though um so sick, dude uh, but like, you know, kind of like going back to the characterization, though, too, is like everything you need to know about Vega is like is said in that one scene of it, like of him. Like, what is it? He's on he's on screen for like, what, five minutes, maybe. Right. And, and like you learn everything about him, like uh, like all his characterization, like how he's a psychopath. And like he's he doesn't well, you see can watch Chun show it slowly learning it. Chun Li's like. Well, this guy's freaking weird and then she's like oh no this guy has a lot of problems yeah, as the fight goes out. on <laughs> yeah. yeah like licking the blood off the blade yeah. like that definitely yeah. lets you know he's just a wild one i Not love like to hunt little rabbits especially cute ones like you I go, <laughs> yeah. okay all right <laughs> he heavily implied that he skins people alive yeah right yeah, like no. women in particular he, he, ad he admitted it yeah, yeah. Like he Blake takes Link. pleasure in just like slowly cutting them up. It's like, 
Oh, yeah, and then he drinks it, and yeah, he was definitely a creepy Jeffrey Dahmer ass. Yeah. <laughs> Vega with like some black frames glasses and a and Jeffrey Dahmer mustache. They're like, what if we had Jeffrey Dahmer, but what if we made him a ninja? All right, <laughs> yeah. cool. From Spain, genius. Yeah. Make it happen. <laughs> Toto. <laughs> he's a he's a what are those? He's only allowed to be like... trash in games, though. It's, it's the one rule. We gotta follow it. Oh Is my it God. a bull tamer or whatever those guys are called? Uh, matador. yeah, he's like a matador. Matador. That's yeah, that's what it was. It's like a matador ninja from Spain that wears. Yeah, again, he's like wild. For sure. Um, Balrog's pretty cool. Either. What's that? Pretty I said sweet Balrog's snake. pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Balrog. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I I keep forgetting. <laughs> Yeah, so th I just have to put this out there. I typically call them, and if you guys didn't know, if anyone's listening that didn't know, I typically, they will call them, I think it's like Balrog, Vega, and Bison, or their names are mixed up, right? They, yes. they changed them around because they were worried that M. Bison, who was Balrog, was go they were gonna get sued by Mike Tyson. Yes. And, and I don't- They were terrified. Mike Bison. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know why they didn't just swap two names. I don't know why they swapped three names around. Yeah, I, I, I did. You know, I never even thought about that until you brought it up. <laughs> I just, you kind of messed, you kind of got me messed up now. <laughs> I have no idea. Didn't, why didn't swap did you swap three, three for names? no damn reason? I, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, the, the fighting game community refers to them as like Claw, Dictator, and Boxer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I have to I have to call, keep telling Quinn. I just love their Japanese names. I don't. Know. He Sorry. he calls them the Japanese names, and every time he says the Japanese names, I always get confused every time. Well, my mind just goes, think "What?" Vega is a more badass name for Bison. Vega. <laughs> yeah. Vega's just a more badass name. The problem is it doesn't fit anymore to me. It like it doesn't sound right. Well, that's that's fair. Yeah. I mean, to, I think, was that your first introduction to Street Fighter as well? Um, no, no, I had played the game a little bit. Right. Um, uh, so I was so, actually super confused. <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, what? Uh, uh. Yeah, because it didn't make any damn sense to me. Um. But I, I suppose this this movie was like a huge success, and it kind of makes me wonder why we never got a sequel. Uh, well, we I mean we got Alpha and then Alpha Generations. I, I mean I can't personally. I've I bought both you know Street Fighter Two and Alpha on VHS. Like I own both of them. Uh -huh. I thought Alpha was bad. I still think it's bad. I don't like it. I've never seen Alpha. Oh, wow, really? I've never, really? I, to, to be fair, I've only seen the English dub of it. Uh, I don't know if that has something to do with it, but like I find okay. Shun to be incredibly annoying, personally. Oh, um, Chun-Li is annoying? girl dirty. What's that? You thought Chun-Li was annoying in Alpha? No, Shun. Shun. Oh, Shun. Yeah, oh, no, yeah, Shun. I thought he said weird. Chun. I yeah. Said Shun. Yeah, I, I thought he said Chun too. I was like, what? No, they, yeah, they had um, they had Sh uh, Sean. I'm, I'm sorry, Ken had an apprentice. That's not Sean. It's he called him Shun. No, it was well. Shun was supposed to be Ryu's brother. Oh yeah, it was like oh. something. It was something with some weird like well, uh, like getting the yeah. alpha deep lore here. Well, yeah, like earlier you mentioned about like Street Fighter Two having like a story that's fine and and the story worked for street fighter 2 because it it was a good way to structure scenes together that we wanted to see of characters fighting and yeah, interacting just a bunch of fight scenes yeah the that's story all... wasn't too crazy but like an alpha the story basically ruined it because it got way too weird japanese anime yeah akira or whatever by the oh, end no. like show shun was supposed to be like ryu's brother and like lived with their mom or something like that and so they trained shun uh but he had like the dark hado or whatever but the real antagonist was this rich guy on an island who had like a giant robot that looked kind of like hugo that would fight people and i remember that fighting energy and then put it into the main this movie. 
it's it's super long <laughs> like it's so unnecessarily long and there's drawn so out weird weird bullshit in it that you yeah. that i wish wasn't in it but the animation is so good like the fight scenes are like top tier but it's all strung mm -hmm. together with this weird crap yeah, it's it's a lot of just like sort of like we it almost feels like they didn't actually know what the lore of Street Fighter Alpha was and they just kind of made up their own thing. It, mm -hmm. it, and I know that, you know, I, I was kind of reading that the reason why Street Fighter Alpha went with the anime style was because of the success of Street Fighter 2. They were like, oh, yeah, this is what kids want. So then they they designed they, they made it all very like anime style. Um, mm -hmm. and I think like, was it like the, like, uh, Sagat getting his scar at the beginning of the movie that they, they made that canon within the games. It's a good canon. Yeah, it is. It's so good. Um, but I, I mean, like alpha was always just sort of like, it felt very silly. And like the bad guy was just some guy, you know, like yeah, he's just some dude, he's, he's, just, scientist. he's just some scientist I I have to give this a watch. And then I he really like, got her. You know, he like, you know, and then he just like, they start shooting black. So the thing, the thing I think it, it suffers from is like, you ever seen like when animes or like a cartoon show, they just use blasts for battles and it just kind of ruins the action because they're just shooting at wow. each other. It feels like a lot of times they're just throwing like hados from what I remember at each other instead of like actually like doing lots and lots of hand to hand combat or when Akuma shows up and he's just literally just a standing, you know, figure. And then it's like, there's like a, like a, some kind of like animated background, but Akuma really doesn't, you know, I, I don't know. Like, it feels like Akuma was always kind of weird. Like they never, they never really got him right in that movie too. But I mean, then again, it's like, it's Akuma. I don't know. He didn't even really have a shot. Like he, uh, they showed up to his location and there was a bunch of wooden dolls that were cracking and he had a disembodied voice. You yeah. didn't really see Akuma until when the credits were rolling. They had like random scenes put together. And there's like a scene during the credits where Ryu and Akuma are like standing on pillars and then they jump at each other to, to, to like kick at each other to fight, but we don't see it. So like Akuma was basically non existent. Like, yeah. In the movie. It, it really feels like Akuma should have been the bad guy, like in, instead of just random Doctor Man. Uh, you know, I think that would have made a lot more sense. Um, oh, sure. And yeah. a, a, a random doctor man made Akuma. Oh, no. No, don't do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, just um, cut out the science stuff and cut out the cyborg that's fighting people and then absorbing his every used brother Shun into his stomach. And then Shun's head is poking out of the android's stomach and it looks like Akira. Yeah, dude, there's weird anime stuff in this that's got no business oh. being in there. Sounds also, like a movie. also uh, wasn't like like Shun being Ryu's brother like a bunch of bullshit too. Like it, it just it wasn't. It was, yeah, it was it was a trick. Uh, they basically they hired him to convince him to, that he was his brother so they could lure him into a tournament to get the cyborg to fight him so he could get his dark hado. So it was all just a big dumb plan to send him his brother that he didn't know he had to get him to fight but, and get pissed off but also this random kid also had the dark hado oh i i don't how did that happen yeah they, they i think they injected it into him the same way he uses cyborgs to oh. uh, uh absorb like other people's fighting techniques okay. i think they got that dark hado or something i don't know it didn't make any sense it's okay yeah, I mean, like, the fight scenes were cool, though. Like, with when you were talking about how you just remember it mostly being Hadouken Blast. Yeah. There was actually a lot of really cool choreographed fighting uh, in in the movie. I think it's just been a long time since you saw it. And you were probably bored to tears and forgot about the cool parts. <laughs> I, 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 I... It's not that... I, I remember, like, I had it on VHS, and I would watch it over and over and over and over again. But that, that's how I know I didn't like it, because I don't remember it as well. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I like I remember the animation of Street Fighter 2 a lot more. Like, I remember I could I remember every fight scene. Right. And, you know, it, it'll pop up into my head every once in a while. But like Alpha just kind of just didn't I, I didn't vibe with it. And it feels like they just cheaped out. They wanted to make a cheaper sequel to just kind of cash in. And I feel like that's sort of where they they fucked up on, with Alpha. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't say that they 
if anything, I think they doubled or fucking tripled the budget or some crap for the Alpha movie. Because okay. it was like quite, it was twice the length. The animation was way more complicated and in depth. It's just the story completely jacked it up. Like if you, uh, okay. that's, why, that's why Alpha makes such an incredible trailer because they're showing all these cool fight scenes and disembodied shots. But a lot of those shots are from like the after credit sequence or like just the quick fight with like Dan fighting Birdie on yeah. the island at the end, you know? So you, it's got, it's great for taking little snippets of like cool fight scenes. But when you're watching the whole two hour or whatever of it, you're just like, oh God, dude, this is dragging ass. And what are we talking about? And this is so weird. And this doesn't make sense. You know, yeah. so um, it's more like the way it was structured together. But I think it wasn't until Alpha Generations, the one after that, where I think they really cheapened out on the budget. It was like half the length. The animation was not nearly as good, but still worth watching. But yeah. that's where I think they tanked off. Well, I mean, like Alpha Generations came out like a long time after alpha and i feel like it was only true yeah i feel like it was only meant to kind of be like a little like made for tv movie or something but uh yeah you're probably right that it's probably in a different category but uh, honestly i'm gonna have to sit down and and rewatch alpha but um sort of kind of i feel like i want to kind of trail back to street fighter 2 because it is i I didn't know we'd do a mini review of alpha but a mini review of alpha somebody should have let me know keep 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 us locked in man the attention deficit disorder (laughs) uh, lure us away it gets real i i I get it um so like uh i mean obviously i feel like the the, the movie did a great job of, you know, kind of characterizing everyone who was on screen. Like even even Cammy just being there for like five seconds, you get like a little bit of her backstory, you know, mm-hmm. uh, um, like uh, Zangief shows up and you know what you know what he's about. Like yeah. the the art style, like you said, it transcends sort of like uh, like words in a lot of ways. Like you can look at a lot of the Street Fighter characters and you can tell who they are. Yeah, their personality is very much on on display yeah it's the rule of don't show or uh don't uh, show don't tell yeah show, don't tell yes and I, I think one thing that sort of is very daring that this this movie does uh is it has multiple protagonists and i don't i still don't know how they quite pulled that off too where they have like well i mean I, they have an a they have like almost like an A plot and a B plot, but it's almost like an A, B, and C plot almost, you know? Cause you have um, sort of, you have Ryu and Ken, and then you have Chun-Li and Guile, and sort of they're kind of, you know, how they came together at the end. But mm-hmm. um, I sort of think like that is probably one of the more bold parts of the movie because I I don't know, I, I think they kind of realized they didn't have much of a story, so they had to kind of start stretching it out a bit um what was like kind of some of the parts i i don't know i'm I'm trying to think of here where we should go for kind of this uh, for the movie now because there's there's some stuff i want to kind of touch on but trying to think of what those things are um i I mean it it had such an influence on on not only anime but like the games as well you know i mean dramatic battles and in uh street fighter alpha those uh, Alpha 2 and I think they were in Alpha 2 uh, in the arcade version. There's like yeah. a special one in the Alpha 3. I mean, having two on one fighting Bison. Uh, oh, that's know. right. I forgot about that. So that that's why they made that was because of the movie, the end of right. the movie. Yeah. Or, and originally in Alpha 2, there was a code you can input at the arcade that would open up the special fight where it would literally just be Ryu and Ken versus Bison. And it was based off of the movie. And then in Alpha 3, they just straight up added dramatic battles or it'd be like two on one or two on two where it's just mayhem. Yeah. Um, now, l- let me ask you guys this. Do you think that Street Fighter should have stuck to a more realistic kind of version of it? Or do you think it, it, it did the right thing by going the anime route? I don't know, because the anime is almost pretty grounded. I mean, obviously, that you, you're shooting projectiles and, you know, anime beams and well, not, but for the most part, the, it was pretty gritty. The thing about that is, like, for example, the Hado, they, the Hadoken, they make it more of like a thing. Like, like they gotta like charge up and really like focus like their key, and then 
you know, later you have them just like, bah, 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 you know, machine gun at them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So like, I, so I, I felt like that kept it more like um, grounded, as you said, for Street Fighter 2 to have it be like more of this like ultimate technique, like I really have to focus for this thing to work. Yeah. Right. Like it took training. So they and, couldn't like, rely on it. Yeah. Kind of, like yeah. Up their key energy and the, like it's a technique you have to perfect and yeah. it's like spending your life energy out or something like that. Like Chun of... never even does anything like that. She never does a Kikoken or anything like that. So Oh, you're right. We get a spinning bird kick. We get a lightning kick and that's it. They did animate her <laughs> doing a Kiko, uh, Kikosho or whatever or Kikoken, but uh, they didn't put it in the movie. There's like a scene with her in the uh, wearing the the yellow shirt when Vega attacks her and she's throwing a kakoken, but I guess they didn't use it oh. for the fight, so they cut it. Yeah, fair enough. I'm glad they did. Actually, I I feel like she doesn't need it. Yeah, I mean, lightning legs and stuff like that. Just and they even gave her her wall Spinning jump. Bird dick. Yeah, dude, it's amazing <laughs> they were able to implement those kind of wacky fighting game moves. And make them look realistic. Like even Blanca, when he's flipping around, like he he flips off the wall and is like doing that little sonic spin dash through the air. And well, yeah, like Chun, they knew it was ridiculous that she basically just like spun in the air. So they had her like do like a handstand on the ground for the spinning exactly. bird. Exactly. Like perfect. That's like a nice like medium between the two. Yeah. Of complete unrealistic and not having it in there. Right, yeah, like the way they're able to, like, have her give her a wall jump and spinning bird kick and exactly and lightning. Great. Like, they they make it look grounded and realistic at the same time. They did such a good job of implementing those things. Yeah, you know. Yep. Until she threw the couch. Until she threw. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a move she gets later on in like Street Fighter Six or Street Fighter Seven or something. He's her special Level one super. She just throws a couch. Yeah, she just gets an endless supply of couches. I mean, I think we've all seen, you know, Street Fighter Six paid homage to the Street Fighter Two animated movie. Mm -hmm, with Candy bringing... Super. Yep. Yep. A lot of that. That was a good addition. Um, you know, maybe like if they bring in Vega. But actually, like, didn't didn't the 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 season two cast get leaked? Come to think of it. I haven't seen anything. Oh, um, I had heard it got leaked. Vega's entity is gonna suck because Vega always sucks. It's the rule. Damn. Vega's not allowed to be a good character. I thought Vega was good really? in Street Fighter 2. Not really, because so like before, so he has his mechanic where he yeah. has his claw and he has his mask. And if when you hit him a couple times, he loses his claw and then his entire neutral goes out the window. <laughs> Once he yeah, loses but, that claw, he loses damage, he loses range and it, becomes like the worst character. Yeah, but good Vega players don't get hit. <laughs> Fair. Also, if he loses his mask, he loses health. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. Yeah. So defense mechanism. He takes more damage. Like okay, through me, I guess. <laughs> How yeah, dare I, I try to play his, something like this? I think that was one of his better games because I still see Vega players in high level Street Fighter Two play where I'm like, oh crap. I mean, yeah. You're just always going to see Vega because people like Vega. They're like, he's a cool design character. Yeah, that's true. It, yeah, it's, even when you add people play him. Street Fighter 2 is one of those those games where, like, it's been around so long that, like, you know, they have, like, those masters of, like, all of the, like, specific character specific people. And it's like, yeah. you just kind of run into one of those guys and it's like, yep, no, this Vega does not suck. He's good in the right hands. It's kind of like anything else, you know? It's like Commander Jesse and Dalsum. V you know Vega what I mean? does suck, but this guy is a god with Vega. What you gonna do? I I mean, I, I honestly feel like there's a l in lower level, they're, like you're not gonna see, I mean, you're gonna see some Vegas, but it's like, just gonna be people trying to knowledge check you. But I don't think they're like dial. good Vegas, dial you know? Yeah, I can see. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you can't block this sonic right. boom. You can't. You can't. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't stop a flash kick. I mean, it's just rock yeah, paper what scissors. What a wobble! A shimmy? Yeah. You mean in in um, Street Fighter Two, Guile has basically an infinite, practically. Wait, you're talking about his like his handcuffs? His handcuff uh, glitch? Maybe? 
Or are you talking about? Are you talking about his untackable throw, like Guile in? Uh, Maybe, it might. It might be the untackable throw. You can just like loop them. Just, yeah, it's, it's like you get it's you, can, over. you can get them in the corner, and basically you throw a sonic boom, and they're still in block stun. And while they're recovering from block stun, they're unable to tech a throw. So you can basically throw a sonic boom, walk up, throw, throw a sonic oh. boom, and you're getting up, and then they have to block it, and then you throw yeah. them again, and then it's a loop. It's it's just an infinite. They just die. There's yeah, there's no you, counterplay whatsoever. You just yeah, you just lose. get. There's a lot of weird <laughs> stuff like that in Street Fighter too. There's so many different versions too. Um, That's what I do when I play Arcade 1 Up. I'll play Guile and I'll just get him stuck in the corner and just keep throwing him over and over again. Degenerate, but I get it. <laughs> Anything to win. You should play <laughs> the other guy. Look <laughs> at uh, their face right now. It's awful. They're, they're going to punch you. Uh, but if you guys were going to kind of like give this movie a rating, like oh, between boy. 1 to 10. What do you think you would rate Street Fighter II, the animated movie? I'll let you go first. What What would Me? you consider a 10 uh, and what would you consider a 0 in this scale? 5 is average, right? Um, 5 would be average. Yeah, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's average. So the problem is I'm kind of interested to see what you... you could have, I mean, you could have multiple scales. Like, you don't have to have one. I mean, you well, can give me a couple of... I just, okay. I just want you guys to go first. I think... That I would give it uh -huh. on its own merits, right? A seven. Okay. The story is paper thin, mm -hmm. which is fine. The dialogue is silly, which is fine. But really, what carries it is the characters and the fight scenes, and that is why I will decide on a seven. Okay. Any higher, I can't really justify, but the fight scenes are so awesome, I feel like rating it lower is a disservice to it. All right, that's pretty fair. That's pretty fair. Um, right. Yeah, I want, I, want, I want you to go next. I want, uh, I want to be last. Okay. Uh, I think... <laughs> okay, so... I, I feel like I'm a little, you know, biased here, but I think I would definitely rate it an 8. I don't... I, I feel like a 9 is... A little too good for the movie like because of the like i said it's sort of you know some of its longer scenes and you know a little bit of its shorter dialogue but yeah i would say like an eight overall not for me mostly because of like nostalgia and impact on it and the amazing fight scenes right that makes sense yeah eight's a pretty good score you know? yeah with all with all of its faults and whatever else for sure many faults <clears throat> many <laughs> many faults like the entire third act kind of falls. uh yeah, yeah the third <laughs> act just starts to fall apart like there there it's like you know come on man like we gotta wrap this we up gotta, type we stuff. gotta bring everything together uh honda and ryu are hanging out in uh in this like mountain hut and then bison <laughs> finds them and guile's there all right let's go let's do it and final they fight all, <laughs> yeah they all show up at the the same location in the mountains yeah, and then they, like Guile doesn't even get to fight Bison. He just like, oh man, he has to Job. fight. He yeah he. he <laughs> does, oh yeah, he doesn't he like? Kick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he throws a sonic boom, does a flash kick, and then like Bison just shocks his mind and sends him into like a yeah. forest. He doesn't he like send him out like off the side of the mountain. Like he just yeah, throws him. And Oh yeah, yeah and that's and right. It cuts, away, it cuts away, and then it cuts back, and then Giles just like leaned up against a broken tree with his with his head bleeding, and got yeah. his got his ass handed to him, like, ah, beat the hell out of him. Have to avenge, you know, my my friend. Arr. And Bison was about to kill him, and then Bison's like, "Nah, you're not worth it. I'm not gonna rematch that." Was, oh, he, he like literally just just like you know, he, he charged hits on him. Cancel on the rematch. Yeah, exactly. he charges. Ah, oh, yeah, he bastard. <laughs> just hit taunt. Yeah, he be, he walked away and then you know it's sort of like when you lose like eight times or something to your friend and then and then they're not gonna play you again you're like get back here you bastard i said one more <laughs> yeah. one more one more Come back, you i'm coward. gonna get it this time <laughs> you bastard you're just like nah. bleeding with like a broken leg you're like get back here you bitch i'll fucking take <laughs> you on i didn't hear no bell <laughs> oh man monty python yeah, I, actually ed I actually edited that uh that little thing together where 
where like instead of hitting rematch, Bison walks away. I turned it into like a meme or something. If I find <laughs> it, I'll send it to you. Sounds great. <clears throat> so what what do you if you were gonna give it a rating, Battle Lastly, what would you long. what would you rate this movie? Alright. My rating Here for Street is. Fighter 2 the animated movie. Between one and ten. Five being an average film. Mm-hmm. Uh Man, I'm I'm not one to do this, but I give it a 10. Like Damn. I'm, I'm, being I'm being real. I'm being real. I've watched a lot of anime and it's not just nostalgia. I think really what it is is it's the opposite now is that it's so beloved that you kind of want to try to be more critical of it and like look back on it and nitpick it. But I think if we apply that same kind of nitpicking that we do to any other anything film that isn't yeah, isn't as beloved as like Street Fighter 2. I mean, the way it balances out the characters, it's like, it's to me, it's like hyper condensed. It's lightning in a bottle and the way that they were able to implement 90s grunge music. So it's like this little time piece and yeah. just for what it did to animate, it's so grounded. It's got a unique style, like art style. That's like, I can't really think of another movie where i'm like oh yeah that looks like street fighter 2 the anime movie like it's almost encompassing its own style with tiny heads and like big bodies yeah it feels gritty the fight scenes are really well choreographed like when ryu's fights fei long you know oh like yeah scene. yep yeah it's just you're gonna get jobbed poor fei long <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Who was voiced by Brian Cranston, by the way? Did you know that? He's all uh, the, yeah. The guy childhood. from the guy from Breaking Bad uh, and the dad from Malcolm and, and Power Moore. Rangers. Brian Cranston was in Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah. He voiced one of the monsters in Power Rangers. Oh, <laughs> that's right. I knew that, and I forgot. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot about that. I think, but yeah, it's kind of weird picturing like Brian Cranston and being like, whoa. Uh, fighting like Ryu, man. It, it doesn't sound anything like him, really. But maybe it's because he's young. To me, it doesn't sound like him. I mean, it does a little bit when he like you know gets a little bit of a deeper voice. But I mean, he has a he has a pretty like large like vocal range. Yeah, I think it sounds like him though. Like there's a part where Fei Long has his arm broken and Ryu's about to stop fighting him, and he's like, and then Fei Long yells and he's like, "No, we're not done yet." And you, if you close your eyes, you can picture Walter White. <laughs> Oh, man. Like yelling, you know, just to be like, we're not done yet. Jesse, we have to cook. It was and definitely man. time to cook. Yeah, man. I, I got to give it a 10, bro. I I mean, ten. minus wow. nostalgia. I, it's one of the ones I'll just go back to and I'll watch endless amounts of times. I can watch it at any point. If it's on, I'll watch the rest of it. Like, I can't have it on in the background. It has my full attention at all times. The music, the characters, the animation. Living yeah. rent free. I mean, what, what else could I if because to me, if I don't give that a 10, what do I give a 10? And if I don't give that a 10, I don't give anything a 10. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I oh, guess I mean, in the world of anime, my 10's Akira. So, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Akira, Ghost in yeah. the Shell. Well, or, I mean, um, I, 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 it's to be fair, they both are action movies, but they feel like different genres. You know, Akira mm -hmm. and they might as well, you know, they're different genres. I don't. That's so, fair. They both anime, yeah. But I mean, you know what I mean. I, I don't really consider them in the same sort of boat. Ghost in the Shell, then. It's, it's like sci. It's like yeah, another sci-fi action film. I don't know. I mean, there's there's heavy sci-fi in Street Fighter Two, the movie, like those the cyborgs and like yeah. the augmentation of people and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, some so they, stuff. they okay. lean into the sci-fi for Street Fighter 2, the movie as well. Yeah, but at the same time, they're blending like modern tech. Like they're still using landline phones. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's it's, it's all phone. it's uh, it's out there. But, you know, it it's still like there's still a lot of sci-fi elements that they've just randomly integrated. Yeah, it's like Dragon Ball using the space Skype. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, where they have like landline telephones and other weird blended technology. But... It's like, here's a landline telephone. Also, I could take this capsule and it turns into a house. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, Akira, Akira is like, I feel like that's in a realm of its own thing where it's put up on this pedestal because of like he, the incredible. He always had his fun. 
That's, yeah. that's all it came down to. It was just some interesting idea he had. He's like, oh, it'd be so cool if they could do this. And he's like, writes it out. There it is. Talk about Toriyama? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Toriyama. Oh. Uh, so, so like, I guess rest, I rest in peace. Yeah, re definitely rest in peace. Um, but I, I, okay. So my question is, can you think of another like martial arts film, like anime film that is comparable to this, to this one in terms of Street Fighter 2? Yeah. Mm, mm, let me stew over for a second. Cause I know there is some, but like when you put on the spot, I know I really like the Fatal Fury movie, but I, I, I don't put that up there with. Street Fighter 2. Um. I mean, mine's a cheat. I would go with like the various uh, Hijami no Ippo movies. They're all extremely good, but yeah, they're also all tied into though. the canon. Yeah, but it's he, boxing's fighting. No, yeah. it's still fighting, but it's not like it's not the same kind of. Ippo is more of almost more of a sports anime. Like it's yeah. fighting, but it's like. Oh yeah, boxing sports. Yeah. Right, and then there's also uh, Iron Fist Tekken. Uh, which I haven't watched in a long time. I don't know how much that holds up. Then there's Baki. Baki's pretty rad. I, um, I, I like. Baki's. Those are those are, like I. I'm not a big. I'm a real. I'm not a big fan of '90s Baki. I don't like the, the anime. With the one where he, where he has the black hair I, and the OVA. I prefer '90s Baki over the new stuff. The new stuff went wacky but i know yeah, the manga also <laughs> went wacky so it's just how it is i, I don't know it why was a change of style for the writing i think it's the anime i think i think it's the art style that just didn't that okay. doesn't pull me in i don't know why i mean it's just like it, they're buff dudes that fight each other i've seen it in dragon ball i've seen it whatever uh but maybe i'll have to give it another try um for sure oh, but well, I, well, I just want i just want to clarify real quick because there's three different bakis there's, yes. uh, there's oh, God. the original oh, there's the original OVA Baki where he has black hair and it's like a two three episode OVA series and mm -hmm. Baki is almost more like flamboyant and goofy and has black hair. Yeah. Then there was like the TV series that came out like a few years after that that was Baki the Grappler where he had red hair. Red hair. Red hair and yes. they used like uh, Deer and Gray for the opening uh, sequence. Um, that was that was the one I enjoyed the the red haired Baki. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed the. Uh, I was watching that for a while. I was buying those DVDs when they were coming out, and then there's the Netflix Baki, which most people know. So and that like, one jumped the shark. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole series jumps the shark. It's uh, just yeah, the whole series jumps the shark. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, the the red hair Baki had such like a solid, like foundation, and then the writing style completely changes because of the author. So it's just like. Okay, I mean, yeah, I'm I mean, glad that the Baki ended here, so I can like appreciate that and not have to deal with the absurdity of the continued story that was happening in the Netflix. Yeah, it, it's a fine line, right? Because in, in Baki really the is. TV show, like he they, he goes to the mountains and fights the Yasha ape, and you're like, well, that's yeah. ridiculous. But then you think back yeah, to Ippo when uh, when uh, <laughs> Tak Takamura. Yeah, Takamura fights a bear and then eats yeah. him later. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but obviously Ippo is more grounded in like the technical aspect of boxing as a sport and as yeah. a martial art and stuff. It's because the mangaka was a boxer who turned into a boxing coach and then mm -hmm. decided to write Ippo, which is amazing, by the way. Yeah, it really is. Um, but, uh, those are the those are the ones that come to mind when I think of like comparable martial arts outside from the obvious like dragon ball z movies you know like uh dead dragon zone ball. or whatever you know yeah dead, dead, really? yeah like early early dragon ball z has the movies have amazing fight scenes um mm -hmm. and not Great not the, still my favorite the other ones Last don't time. it's just you know for whatever reason they just don't animate the hand-to-hand -hand combat as much choreographed fighting uh basically died off after like the first three dragon ball z movies because I yeah. went back and I, I went back and rewatched uh, the original Dragon Ball Z movies, and my original favorites were some of the newer ones. But when I went back and rewatched Dead Zone, which I remember not being that big of a fan of, it's my new favorite. I was like, oh, dude, people love Dead Zone because it's That's rad. Really the fighting and choreographed yeah. uh, fighting that takes place in that actually feels like a everyone gets to film. shine in Dead Zone. 
Which yeah, is like Krillin great. shows up and he can do yeah. some stuff. You know, Piccolo's hand yeah. and dude's Piccolo ass. Piccolo does a bunch of shit. Like, damn, let's do it. Let's fucking go. Yeah, it's it just gets you like, hyped. Really good. Um, yeah, man. I, those are the ones that probably come to mind when I think of comparable martial arts films. But I know there's some other ones I'm going to think of later. I'm gonna be like, oh, I should have said that, you know, but I can't think of it right now. Yeah. I'm, well, I mean, I'm, are you going to stick like to strictly martial arts, martial arts, like hand to hand? Or would you also include like, you know, like sword fights and stuff like that? Like, I like, sort of the stranger, I, I, which has a mix of martial arts and amazing sword fights. I mean, hey, man, I, I'm not aware of that. I've never seen it, so I can't really oh, say. Oh, you should watch Sword of the Stranger. Oh, it's so good. Oh, like Samurai Champloo or something. Yeah, uh, Samurai Champloo is another really good one. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a martial art. Yeah, for sure. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, the, like uh, weapons are obviously martial arts. They're, yeah. you know, uh, Eastern, Western Kenshin. martial arts. Yeah. Kenshin. Uh, all has great stuff. I, I just, I guess I mean like in movie form. And sort of like oh, that, nice. yeah, anime it's movie sort. Yeah, like I know that that like, I feel like even if, for me, in my general knowledge of anime, I feel like there's not much that I can compare to, this movie in terms of like overall quality of fight scenes. But you know what, um, you know what movie we've completely forgot about that actually does, fit that same like structure of street fighter 2 and almost has the exact same style as dark stalkers dark stalkers got an anime movie i've never um, seen that yeah I've it's it's, it's yeah it's uh dark stalkers the anime movie and but it fell flat it's almost the exact same style animation team and sh they tried to sh even structure it the same way where they basically tried to make um the guy with the long hair and the big sword uh dimitri they tried to make him like the ryu character Who's yeah. wandering around and burdened with all of you know his own stuff, uh, and then they cut away to scenes of like Dark Suckers fighting, like Felicia's fighting some guys, and John Talbane and Victor and Morgan and Dimitri are fighting, and there's some stunning animation, but like the story and pacing is so boring, like it's Aww. it's yeah it falls completely flat. It's just you should really watch that and, and get back to me because. Um, it's basically Street Fighter 2 if it was done wrong. Like, it's so close to being right, but it's just, it's such a, a snore to get through. But you're like, damn, this animation is good. You know, well, like, it well, has you those need moments. to watch Short, Sword of the Stranger. Like, I'll, I, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to start a, a 10 out of 10 for me. I'll have to start, That's 10 out of 10. start a list here because it sounds like I'm missing out on a lot of stuff. Um, back to shows, uh, Kenichi. History's Strongest Disciple Kenichi, super solid martial arts show. Oh, yeah, Sword of the Stranger. Yeah, I've seen some of this. Yeah, it's good it's stuff. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah, it is good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, good Dark story, Stalkers. Great fight. Yeah. yeah, Dark Stalkers is basically Street Fighter 2. Um, like, if you but, just type in Street Fighter 2 anime, you'll see some of the hmm. animation sequences. And you're like, oh my god, this is amazing. How could it screw it up and it's just so much blah 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 and yeah nothing's happening exposition it's so boring and there's not enough character uh -huh. you know street fighter 2's characters you know they shine through but in yeah. dark Stalker, it's just boring talking and they're not they're not interesting enough in it but yeah it's it's weird like we got like a guilty up. gear movie that's how that would turn out too uh pilot. yeah pilot for a guilty gear movie yeah, the, the, the one that was in Guilty Gear XX, like the, the trailer that they made. Exactly. Yeah, that um, it's it's a kind of a it's a very, very cheesy, like your typical anime type, you know, edgy thing. It, it's it's great. Like you should watch the English dub of it. It's it's something else. But yeah, it, here, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send it to you. But also the the intro of Guilty Gear XX itself has an amazing anime intro. Um, but yeah, it's it's all really really Guilty good stuff. Always killed them with their intros. It's kind of how it is. It, yeah, but it looks like they, they yeah like um, Battle Athlete was saying like there was some kind of a pilot you know they were going for. Like they were kind of like playing with the idea of doing it, but, but nothing came up. Yeah, I don't I don't know why either. It was uh it was really cool. But I thought you guys were going to blow my mind by saying there is a Guilty Gear movie. There you go. 
Uh, where should I post this so you can check it out on whenever? Um, in uh, general? Yeah, you can just post it in, in general chat. Okay, cool. And then we'll check it out. Um, and I will, I think I'm going to link the, the Street Fighter 2 movie in, in the chat, in the, the, the podcast and, you know, uh, YouTube. And the I think, edit. yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah, the fan edit. And that was by far the best version I watched. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and I'll probably include um, that that ghost face animation too. So you check that out. Um, I'll check that out for sure. But with that said, Quintessence, where can people find you? You know, occasionally streaming on Twitch, Quintessence HD, posting memes on Twitter, Quintessence HD. Uh, I mean, X, Quintessence HD, of course. Uh, and I'm here at the podcast. Whenever we do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, hopefully we, we kind of get a little bit more um, consistent here after this week. Um, ah. You got to think about right, what we're, life. Gotta think about what we're going to do next week. If we're going to review something or if we're going to do a news week, but we'll figure it out. Uh, next weekend is also Easter. Oh, oh, well, maybe not then. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't celebrate Easter. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, it's, uh, yeah, I love Easter. Hey man, you enjoy Easter. Uh, hey, ha happy Easter. Um, battle athlete. No, not yet. E. Where can people find you, man? Oh, uh, they can find me at twitch.tv slash battle athlete. One word. Uh, my schedule has been really bad cause I've been, you know, a lot of life stuff's been going on. Um, but I got, uh, I also on Twitter, I post like memes and animations or video games or whatever uh, at Battle Athlete. Or it's like Battle underscore Athlete, I think, on there. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I just uploads whatever memes or videos I feel like making these days. I used to make reviews. Um, but yeah, I mostly just stream now, like on Twitch and just hang out with whoever wants to hang out. Yeah, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a really good time. Good people. Good vibes. Um, so with that, guys, uh, this has been the Backlog Podcast number 67. We'll see you soon. Peace out, y'all. Yeah. Bye-bye. Peace.